Hey guys, welcome back to 36 Design and Fab. Today, we're gonna to be working on the 54. Mixing it up a little bit. So this time we're gonna start uh, working on the uh, roll bar for the 54 here. Uh, I've had the bar kit, uh, the main hoop, the rear bars, uh, almost a year now. And uh, I've been pro procrastinating uh, because I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, finally decided to uh, just, you know, do it and uh, get rolling. So uh, I've already got the bar sitting in here. I cut the holes through the floor uh, and made some outriggers from the frame, which I'll show you here in a few minutes. This bar, the main hoop and the rear down bars, are actually a kit for a 55 uh, to 57 Tri-5 Chevy kit. Uh, there are companies that make kits for the 54, uh, like the 49 to 54 body style, but they are way more expensive. And uh, this one I could get on Amazon next day, super easy. Competition engineering uh, it meets uh, the NHRA uh, specs and uh, kind of a no-brainer. The dimensions, the physical dimensions of the Tri-5 Chevys to the 4954 are very similar. The frames are within a couple inches of each other, which really doesn't matter when you're doing the outriggers for the uh, the main hoop anyway. So uh, I thought for the for the uh, the price and the availability and all that, uh, just ordered up this competition engineering uh, 55 Chev uh, six point kit. Um, in its current setup, I don't have the the uh, the door bars. Uh, it, this kit just came with the main hoop and the uh, rear down bars. Uh, I think for now, I'm just going to run this as a four point, which really, as far as NHRA concer is concerned, it does nothing. They don't classify that as a as a uh, a legit roll cage or roll bar. Um, I will put door bars in eventually, uh, just for now, that's what I got. I want to get this in painted, uh, and looking decent. Uh, but for now, roll bar, let's get started. So we're under the car here now. Uh, this is what I've got done so far. The uh, this is a two by three. Uh, can't remember the wall thickness at the moment. One thirty wall or something like that. Uh, rectangular tubing, uh, outrigger. So NHRA uh, rules say that on a full body, full frame car such as this, the uh, roll bar has to come down and make contact with the frame. You cannot. Uh, played it to the floor like you do on a unibody car. So the problem with uh, these cars and the Tri-5s and a whole bunch of others is the frame is actually quite inboard uh, of the rocker panels. And so if you were to put the roll bar uh, main hoop directly on the frame, it would make it really narrow and just cause a whole bunch of problems, uh, probably because of the uh, the narrowed width wouldn't even pass NHRA tech. So you have to weld these uh, outriggers on to the side of the frame. It has to be welded all the way around. And it has to uh, be tied into the rocker panel as well. Essentially making the car a unibody frame, really. Uh, so, like I said, two by three uh, rectangular tubing. I uh, cut out with a air hacksaw, and I'll cut to a clip here in a second showing me doing that, which was an absolute nightmare, I will tell you. My air saw is dying a slow death, and I think it's done. Anyway, 
got that notched out. Tubing is slid in nice and tight to the frame. I still have to come back in here, uh, clean the paint off the frame on the, on the face there to uh, uh, clean that up for welding. So we'll, uh, we'll do that. Once that's in welded and secure, then the main hoop comes down, rests right on top of the uh, rectangular tubing here. Burn that in uh, and we got our main hoop in. Uh, the rear down bars are gonna be a challenge, but we'll get to that when we get there. Uh, for now, I gotta do some paint grinding. And I'll tell you, it's uh, hmm, three degrees Celsius in the garage right now, which is, I don't know, like 30, 35 degrees Fahrenheit for you uh, US folks. Uh, so it's a bit chilly in here. And it is even colder down here on the floor. <sighs> I need a bigger and warmer shop. Let's go, guys. Oh. Sort of the uh, the push for me to get started on this is uh, a buddy of mine uh, called me up and said, or texted me, and said, hey man, I'm putting my car into a uh, big car show down in the city and uh, in June and want to know if you want to and put your car in it. And I thought, yeah, man, let's do that. But I don't have a car that's uh, ready to be shown. So I got some work to do. Uh, within the next, uh, what, three or four months. Ugh. Kind of uh, uncovered a little bit of uh, rot that I didn't know was there. Inner rockers are a tad thin. So, going to have to... Uh, Patch that, I guess. Great. Let's uh, move on to the other side. There, we got the other side all cleaned up. Uh, here's my outrigger. Got the uh, mill scale cleaned off. All the edges cleaned up. So she's gonna go something like so, she's a tight fit. There we go. Nice and tight. There. She's in. Time to weld. Just got to make sure the uh, outrigger is uh, square to the frame here. And I eyeballed that nearly perfectly. Get in here and give it a tack weld. Double check that everything's where we want it and uh, we'll go for the, oh, dinner's ready. Oh, ready again. Let's weld. Nice tack weld. Oh, lost my helmet. Perfect. My uh, notch in the inner. Uh... Can't see you guys. Where are you? Whoa. Hey, there you are. So my uh, my notch in the inner uh, uh, rocker panel here will locate the outside of the uh, outrigger and. I've got it uh, fairly flush with the top of the frame rail. I'm going to have to cut out more of the floor to, to access that to weld across the top. It uh, has to be welded all the way around on the frame. So uh, unfortunately i got to hack more of the floor than I really want to, but uh, you know, trying to do this right. So let's get this thing welded in on the underside and I'll keep on rolling. <sighs>
much junk under here. I can't see, I can't move. Oh. I hate, hate working on a creeper. So we got the uh, outriggers uh, welded in here. I won't even tell you how frustrating this is welding that thick steel to the thin sheet metal of the rocker panels. Holy, that sucked. So here you can see the uh, main hoop resting on that outrigger there. Uh, I'm going to need to put a uh, <coughs> ratchet strap around here and pull the two legs of the main hoop together just a bit uh, to give my uh, give my clearance to the doors. Uh, being that this car is a four door, it uh, raises a few extra issues that you wouldn't with a two door, uh, mainly the, the function of the rear doors. But also you can see, hi, reflection. You can see the uh, the roll bar hoop there, uh, whereas a two door it would be hidden be usually be hidden behind the post here. Uh, so unfortunately, it, I mean it is what it is. I got to deal with it. Um, but I want to re keep the function of the rear doors, and uh, so I need these tubes to get pulled in a little bit. Not doesn't. It's not going to take much, maybe a quarter inch. And uh, so I'll get the ratchet strap on it and uh, get the first tack weld, take off the main hoop, take a bunch of measurements, make sure we're straight and uh, square to the chassis and uh, get the, uh, the angle of the main hoop uh, or the, the tilt front and back here set exactly the way I want it. part about working inside the car is I just can't see a thing. Do one tack here on this side. Need my helmet. I need to give myself a welder splash. So, uh, Here's where we need to set the angle of the hoop here. And uh, all I'm going to do is use my little digital angle finder here. And what I'm, my goal here is to have the main hoop bar uh, angle match 
the angle of the B pillar of the car. So, I mean, just eyeballing it, I think I've got it pretty close. But uh, I'm going to set my little guy. Oops. Come on, stick. I'm going to set my angle finder on the B pillar. Zero it. That is zero. I'll come back here, set that on there, and holy crap. 0.1 degree. I, I, my eyeball is uh, dialed. So, uh, yeah, let's get that tacked in now. We got the uh, bar welded in. Yeah, uh, how nice and tight that fits the headliner. Uh, the gap on the, the center, but that's fine. Welded. Uh, next step. Next step is going to be uh, doing the. Uh, Rear down bars, and I'm uh, going to be honest. I'm not looking forward to it. I'm nervous because I uh, I don't want to mess it up. So a little change of plans. Uh, decided to uh, hold off on the uh, rear down bars. Uh, I got to do some thinking. The Pre-bed bars for the Tri-5 Chevy, like this close to fitting uh, the way they're supposed to in this car. Um, if I flip the bars around so that the, uh, the short section before the bend is in the trunk, it fits. However, I'm not sure I like how the bar kind of drops down below the uh, rear door opening. So while I'm thinking about that, I uh, went ahead and I measured and cut for the uh, harness bar.
got my uh, main hoop there all cleaned up. So what we're going to do, so on this pipe, the way I set it up was uh, that the, uh, the seam of the tubing would be at the bottom. I just think it's just a nicer look. Uh, even though it's going to be painted and you probably wouldn't even see it. I, you know, just want to make sure it's good. So, I'm going to slip the pipe up into place. And so that's a nice snug fit, just friction fit. So, again, I'm uh, going to take my uh, little digital angle finder. I'm going to put it up here. On, I know you guys can't really see that. Up here on the main bar. Zero it. Then bring this down here. We are, so because it's flipped, I am, uh, I need a 180 degrees. Well, I, right now I'm 179.1. I believe this side. Whoa, lost her. One eighty, right, frickin' there. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna go grab a couple clamps to hold this. Hopefully, it doesn't fall. There, clamped into place. So, uh, next step is going to be get out the TIG welder and get myself comfortable. And uh, hopefully, I can make these welds. Let's, I hope I can make these welds. Um, yeah. All right, let's go. Give uh, huge credit to the guys that can do this. Another reason I wanted to uh, to uh, TIG weld the roll bar uh, is, uh, as you've obviously seen, uh, I do have carpeting. Headliner, and uh, I'm a little worried about the sparks from the welding. Uh, stuff on fire, especially this carpet. Back uh, to welding. Absolute biggest pet peeve 
the welding, hitting my bloody hel helmet off of stuff. God, that drives me nuts. Well, I've been doing some welding here, and uh, I'm not getting the results that I want. Uh, the rule, number one rule for big welding is get comfortable and make sure you can see. I can't do either of those in here. I don't know how these roll, gar uh, roll cage guys do it. Um, I am getting so frustrated. So yeah, I need to walk away from this for a while. So I think I'm going to leave it for there uh, for this episode. Uh, I need to come back when I'm calm <laughs> in a better mood. Uh, this is what we've got. He is not pretty. So I, I, I don't know. I really don't know what I'm going to end up doing. Uh, if I can't get this sorted out, weld on here that I'm confident in. I may end up just coming back in here with the uh, die grinder and grinding those smooths and big welding them around. Uh, I don't know. I need I need more practice on this cage. That's all really what it comes down to. And uh, if anybody has any uh, any tips, uh, please please let me know. I'll tell you one thing. I hate welding helmets. It always seems to me when I'm welding, that damn helmet gets in the way. I'm hitting my head off the stuff. It's either too high or too low. I can't see through it. I wish there was a way I could weld with this stuff without wearing a stupid helmet and not, you know, getting welded flat and all that. Uh, so if anybody knows, like, some auto darkening goggles, you know, that would be cool. Uh, yeah. Anyway, ah, that's it for this time. Hopefully I'm in a better mood next time. And uh, we'll see you guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, we'll see you. In this, uh, that sucked. I'm really bad at this. Oh, man. Frustrating.